To discuss the significance of this unrest, let's speak now to Emily Lau. She's a former chair of Hong Kong's Democratic Party and she supports the anti-government protest. Ms Lau, thank you very much for speaking to us here on Euronews. This all started off protests over an extradition bill which have since been scrapped by the government. So what do the protesters want now? Well, of course, the protesters, we want an inquiry because the police have been too brutal. And that's why you see so many people coming onto the streets day and night, nonstop, because they are very angry with the police for beating people up like that. And also, of course, we want an inquiry to find out how this thing just blew up. This is the biggest crisis in Hong Kong in our history. And we need to know all the facts. But the government here and in Beijing, they turn us down. They refuse. They say because the police are against it. So we are really a police state. Who is running Hong Kong? And now, but this violence that we're seeing has to stop. The whole thing has to de-escalate. And the government has to respond to the people's very legitimate demands. But how do you propose that this situation becomes de-escalated? At the moment, it just looks like the pressure keeps on ramping up from both sides. Yes, it's very unfortunate. And there are all kinds of people, as your reporter said. The head of the university is trying to negotiate. I think the people from various religious bodies are trying to help. The political parties are trying to help. Uh, people from the education field are trying to. But it seems the police are very, very tough and they would not let the people come out. And there are hundreds of them trapped there and some are injured and there may not be enough food or water. So it's going to turn out to be a humanitarian crisis. And we don't need that in Hong Kong. But do the police not have the right to defend themselves? We've seen the image of a media officer working for the police with an arrow through his legs, the Molotov cocktails that are being hurled. You know, this is excessive violence, Miss Lau. Yes, I agree with you. And many of us do not support violence. There's no doubt about it. But I think the level of hatred and mistrust here is so strong, it is really frightening. But what we want to do is for the situation to dial down, to de-escalate, so we can try to sort things out. And if they continue, you see the people being trapped inside, and maybe hundreds and thousands are trying to help them to come out, and there will be more conflict with the police, then, I mean, the whole city, as some of the protesters said, would burn. Many people could be killed. There could be a massacre like Hedeman Square 30 years ago. Now, talking of that incident in China, we've seen pictures of PLA, that's the People's Liberation Army, from the Chinese side in the barracks in Hong Kong, coming out onto the streets to say what they said was voluntary clean-up efforts. Do you fear that we could see Chinese boots on the ground in Hong Kong? Yes, of course. It's very worrying. And uh, because the Hong Kong Basic Law, which is our mini constitution, and the garrison law, they do not say that the police, uh, the uh, PLA army can just come out on, on their own initiative. They can only come out to maintain public order or if there's a natural disaster. But that's not the case. And they came out. And of course, some people say, oh, very good. They help us to clean the place up. But others are saying, hey, this time you may come out to pick up rubbish. Next time you may come up to quell the unrest. And that would be in breach of the joint declaration and the basic law. Now, the UK's Foreign Office has come out today giving a statement condemning what is happening in Hong Kong. You've gone one step further with the UK government, though. You believe that they should be giving out passports to, so that people in Hong Kong, if they needed to escape, could go to the UK. Do you think that is honestly something that the UK government would entertain? Well, I think they should think about it because it's Britain's moral and political responsibility because these are British citizens, but they are British national overseas, BNO passport. And you know what BNO stands for? It's Britain says no. It's disgraceful. 
These are British subjects, and many of them are very fearful, very anxious. So Britain, and I'm happy to see a number of members of parliament also have come out to say that Britain should discharge this responsibility. And I, of course, I hope the members of the European Union, uh, the allies of Britain, I hope they will also help because Hong Kong is facing a deep crisis. And there are many British people, many Europeans living here. And I certainly hope the international community would speak out and call for calm and ask the Chinese government to exercise restraint. Emily Lau, that's very interesting what you had to say there. Thank you very much for joining us. And it will be interesting to see in the middle of an election season in the UK, where immigration is such a big thing, whether the UK government will go forward with what you're asking for. But thank you very much for speaking to us here on Euronews.